the Sunshine Showdown and the Florida Gators looking to play spoiler today and end Florida State's bid for a 36th consecutive bowl trip. And for the Knowles, they have never won five in a row in this series. They have a chance to make some history today. Boy, does this rivalry run deep. Bragging rights at home. One of the great rivalries in college football, so it's the biggest game we have. There's a lot of hatred there, but you know, this rivalry does mean a lot. Dalvin Cook, give him an inch, he can make a mile. Getting set for Florida and Florida State over the last 25 years. They've each won three national championships, but they both arrived today sporting losing records. As we welcome you to Gainesville, Beth Mullins, Anthony Becht. We've got Rocky Boyman down on the field with us today. And neither of these teams had the season they had hoped for, Anthony. And now as we get set for Florida to move into the offseason, they will not have Chip Kelly as their head coach moving forward. But you've been in these kinds of environments, these big games before, still plenty to play for. Throw the records out the door, right? This is a rivalry game. And I've been in these games. These players have played with, the, uh, with against each other in high school. Some of them have been teammates. Some of them are even related in this game. <laughs> it's going to be chippy. It's going to be physical. I don't like these personal fouls that could happen. But you know what? You might see a few in this game today. Still plenty of bragging rights and certainly still a lot on the line when it comes to recruiting moving forward in a, a, a state that has suddenly got extremely competitive with the likes of UCF and USF and Lane Kiffin down at FAU and Jimbo Fisher who has had as much if not more success than any other head coach in this rivalry trying to make it five straight as the Knowles kick it away. Adarius Lemons with the nice return for Florida gets popped around the 35 and spun down at the 39. And an opportunity today, Anthony, for a couple of young quarterbacks to make a mark. And for Florida, that's Felipe Franks, who's from around the Tallahassee area. Yeah, 6'5", he's a big kid, pure pocket passer. It's been a tough season for him, Beth. He's a young player, redshirt freshman, but he has a cannon for an arm. He has to see it and process it today. This passing game is very complicated, and he's got to be able to get the ball out of his hands quickly to be effective today. Out of Crawfordville, Florida, and a lot of family and friends grew up Seminole followers. Now making his eighth start after being benched a couple of times this year. His first taste of this rivalry. And the handoff is right up the middle. Well, Michael Pirine pushed out beyond the first down marker and even out across midfield. Our impact players for today brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelers. Yeah, well, Michael Pirine is going to be a stud in the running. He's going to get the ball. Brandon Powell on third down is an important piece of this offense. On the outside, Brian Burns for Florida State and Mr. Everything. Find out where he's lined up if you're Florida because he's a game record, Derwin James. Redshirt sophomore out of Haines City, Florida. And it's back to Piran, met in the backfield. And stood up there, Roderick Hoskins, the senior out of Orlando. Running the ball today is going to be effective. So it's got to be the game plan, Beth, for both of these teams. With young quarterbacks, they're asked to do a bunch. Expect P. Ryan and on the other side, Akers, to get the ball quite a bit to help this offense get off the ground. Florida State fans making a little noise here on the road, much to the chagrin of the Gator followers. It's P. Ryan here in the pistol with Franks. Pressure coming off the edge, and the pass tipped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and long. That was Brian Burns. Let's check in with Rocky Boyman. I was able to talk with Charles Kelly, the Florida State defensive coordinator, before the game. He's very concerned with the amount of looks, the amount of stuff, as he said, that Florida does offensively. You'll see perimeter passing game. Then they'll bring in multiple tight ends, move them around. You'll see unbalanced lines. So he really wants to get a hone in on what their theme, what their game plan is early on. And they will show that two tight end look right here on third and ten with Ghouls being Lewis out there. Watch that man on the move right there, number four, Powell, a big third down weapon. Frank's on the rollout, going to try and run for it, and he'll come up about a yard short the reach.
Might make it interesting, but call it a gain of eight and it's fourth and short. At this point in the season, Ben, take some chances, I would say, if you're Florida's offense, stay out on the field fourth and two. And that's exactly what they're going to do. At least show here. Need to get it down inside the 40. They're 69% on the season. I got to think they'll lean towards the heavy tight end side, which is the right side, top of your screen. Double tight end set. They fake it that way, and then the throw behind P. Ryan is incomplete, and the Seminoles will take over. Guess who was coming? That was Derwin James with the pressure. Better find him. He's everywhere on the field. He'll line up in the secondary at safety. He'll come up at the line of scrimmage, and he makes an impactful play on fourth down to get this Florida team off the field. Watch this. Reading the quarterback gets up, distorts the throwing angle of the quarterback, and he can't get it out accurately. The thing that's impressive about Derwin James, I talked to Charles Kelly about this as well. He said he doesn't just know the what, he knows the why, and why we're supposed to line up, why they're blocking us this way. That enables them to move him around and play so many different spots. So from one freshman quarterback to another, this is the true freshman, James Blackman out of Bell Glade, Florida, and his 10th start of the season. Keith Gavin. Bus his way out across the 45. So Blackman, who replaced the injured DeAndre Francois early in the season, goes 6-5, but only a buck 69. Yeah, he's a bit on the thin side, still growing, but he's got a big arm. Short-term memory. That's something Jimbo Fisher likes about this kid. When he makes mistakes, he shakes them off. Timing and accuracy. Can he get the ball out? Can he see it and deliver it on time? That's the biggest issue for the young quarterback. And here is another first-timer in this rivalry, Cam Akers, the true freshman out of Clinton, Mississippi. Our impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelers. You'll see a lot of Akers today getting the ball. Mary's been the hot receiver, number eight. Taven Bryan, a lot of people in-house call him J.J. Watt. And then at the cornerback position, Duke Dawson will be a stud. Akers is going to be a bit shy. That was C.C. Jefferson who got there and hauled him back by grabbing onto the football. That's the strength, Beth, of this defense for Florida. And another fourth down, and again, whereas Florida decided to go for it, Jimbo going the other way, gonna punt this ball away. Logan Tyler. Back to punt it away. And Chauncey Gardner appears to be the guy back to receive the punt. He'll let that go over his head and into the end zone for the touchback. 49 yards on that boot, scoreless early. Gators ball when we return. Whistle over the top for the touchdown. Florida 31, Florida State 3. Touchdown, Florida State! This game is over. A 31-31 tie. That was the 1994 matchup, remembered by the uh, Florida State fans as the choke at doke. Ended in the 31-31 tie, one of the great games in Sunshine Showdown history. And it's back to Felipe Franks with LaMichael P. Ryan, the deep man in the eye. Franks back to throw, hit by Brian Burns, ball is out. Scooped up by Jacob Pugh and returned for a Florida State touchdown. Six five, Beth. 225 pounds, longer arms than anybody on the field. Look at the speed up the field to get by the tackle. He dips under great balance, strapes it off the edge. He led the country with freshman sacks last year, and he makes a huge play to start this game for Florida State. Scoop and score for Pugh, and a member of this senior class that is trying to stay perfect against Florida in their career. Ricky Aguayo, the sophomore on to attempt the extra point. 
Extra point is good. What a boost for a defense that has struggled all year to force turnovers. Just their 11th takeaway. And it counts for six. You get your sack artist on the outside making huge plays. And Johnny on the spot. You love to see the senior pew coming up big with the touchdown. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Vizio as part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. A spectacular day here in the state of Florida. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, home of the Florida Gators, and they find themselves down early to Florida State on a scoop and score by the Seminole defense. Logan Tyler, the punter, also handles their kickoff duties. Darius Lemons back deep on the goal line for Florida. And it's headed in the direction of Brandon Powell. And Powell will be cut down short of the 20. Franks wide open, Powell first down across the 35. And it's 25 games in a row now with a catch for Brandon. Angle route's gonna go back out and come back inside wide open. They bring a pressure on the op opposite side and nobody's home in the middle of the field. He's the third down specialist, Beth. That's Frank's favorite target. Look for him to make multiple catches in those scenarios. Brandon, highly motivated member of this senior class that has never tasted a victory against FSU. He picked up 15 there. On first down, Franks had trouble with the snap that was high. And he's going to get run out of bounds, losing a few by Matthew Thomas, the leading tackler this year for FSU. And again, Beth, that's a learning play right there. The quarterback has a mishandle because of the poor snap. He runs left. He's got time to throw the ball out of bounds. He loses three yards there where he could have threw the ball out of bounds and got himself in a situation where they get back to the line of scrimmage. Hitting on about 56% of his throws this year, seven touchdowns and five interceptions. The numbers for Felipe, uh, Felipe. Split time early with Luke Del Rio and then late with Malik Zaire. Neither one of those guys available today. Gonna use Powell out of the backfield, makes the first man miss and back to the original line of scrimmage. Another tackle for Derwin James. I really like Powell as a player. I think coming into this season, uh, Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, really tried to get this pro element, pro style offense going. And to me, I felt like it took away from the strengths of some of these receivers on this football team. They're space guys. Get them the ball in space, let them make plays. And that's a lot easier than having a quarterback in the range trying to find some of these routes open up in this system. Mark Thompson now in the backfield. Of course, Malik Davis, one of their emerging stars out after getting hurt in their Georgia game. This is Franks trying to buy some more time and he'll just make sure it clears the line of scrimmage out of bounds. Incomplete and it's fourth down. That was Cyrus Fagan giving chase. Tried to find Pal again. It's the second time they ran this third down play, Beth. Two series ago, they tried to get Powell on a fake wheel route and bring him back at the sticks. Both times not open. Good job by Florida State's defense at getting off the field in third and long. DJ Matthews, freshman, is back deep. Johnny Townsend, one of the top punters in the country to boot it away. Senior out of Orlando. Too much on that one. And the touchback. 7-0, Florida State scoring with their defense. Now it's Blackman in the O back out. The one veteran quarterback they had early in the season that got injured, and of course that's a big story for Florida State as well, the injured quarterback DeAndre Francois who went out in the season opening loss against Alabama and that kind of set the tone for what's happened to the Knowles at four and six coming in have to win today have to win against Louisiana Monroe next week to get into a bowl and keep the streak alive 36 in a row it would be and uh, Rocky you had a chance to talk with DeAndre earlier I did he says recovery is going very well main thing they're working on right now is the range of motion squeezing that knee back down he said he'll lose the brace here probably next week and he laughed and said it won't be long before Vic Valoria the strength coach has me running until I can't breathe <laughs> <laughs> yeah they've been going with uh, freshman at quarterback and tailback for about a month or so now Cam Akers 
Joining Blackman, and he'll heave it downfield, and after a big hit to Jarrett Loose, Gardner knocked it away from Nyquan Murray. Gardner's good for that. He's a big-time hitter. The ball has a little too much trajectory on it. Murray was wide open. He puts a little steam on this throw. It puts it right into his hands. He's got a big game. Unfortunately, the air on it allowed the defender to make that big shot and knock it away. A jarring hit by Gardner, and it's third and seven. Downfield, bobbled, knocked around, and intercepted. Picked off at the 25-yard line. Duke Dawson got it. Think it goes off the foot of Auden Tate, the receiver. Well, Marco Wilson, number three, he's on the tight coverage. On Tate, comes up and jams Tate as he's trying to bring the ball down. Tate kicks it up. Duke Dawson catches it. And the senior making a big play. Two seniors now, Beth. One for Florida State, Pew. And now Duke Dawson making big plays on defense to help this team. Terrific coverage by the true freshman, Marco Wilson, the younger brother of Quincy Wilson, who moved on to the NFL after last year. And Dawson now setting up Florida with the short field. will hand it off. Thompson picks up four or five before he's run out of bounds. Martez Ivy was leading the way, the junior out of Apopka, Florida. Thompson, the fifth-year senior, 240 pounds. He brings in a nice changeup. Both of these guys had nice games, him and Pirine, last week, along with Lemons. Expect 24 to be that red zone guy to get some of that forceful run downhill. Last nine games or so, they've been running it better. By committee, they've only had one guy all year with a 100-yard rush game. 34 yards so far on the ground for Florida. They'll get some more here. The burst by Thompson. First down, down to the 10. I'll tell you what, I love this bunch setup. The tight ends here making some key blocks. You got Lewis, number 80, out in front. You got number 30, Goolsby. These guys are getting it done. They're smaller body guys. They catch a lot of balls. At least that's the type of style they are. But they get their nose and stick it in the fan and make big plays for this run game. First and goal, Florida, off of the turnover. Big hole for Thompson. Touchdown, Gators. hole off the right side and Anthony's got some tight end love to give does he cross the goal line before he drops the football yeah he's, yep. he's in with Lewis and Goolsby helping out Eddie Pineda will try and tie it up just 52 seconds and 24 yards after the interception. He's a guy for sure, and now they got him. Speaking of moving him around, <laughs> returning kickoffs. Losing records, forget about it. This still means something to guys like Derwin James, and he'll bring it out to the 29-yard line. Izzo, the tight end in motion. Patrick will run behind him. Cut down at the line of scrimmage. David Reese, the middle linebacker, the leading tackler this year with the stop and a loss of one. You know, Beth, I'm just watching as that play develops. It's so physical at the line of scrimmage. Guys are flying around. I mean, you can tell the energy of both of these teams are high. We only saw Cam Akers on that first possession. It's been Patrick since. Blackman fakes it to him, trying to drop it over the top, and he had Tate, but couldn't connect. Third down. 
I'll tell you what, guys, if you were on this sideline, you just closed your eyes, you'd know there's a big time rivalry football game going on just by the sound of these pads cracking. And there was a big opportunity there, Beth. Again, the young quarterback, it's a touch pass. Wide open, the defender's in front of him, but he just got to drop it in there. Those are things he'll get better at, but these are the things, when you're young, hard to accomplish. Blackman with his first taste of this rivalry, the true freshman looking at third and 11. Gators with four guys coming again, led by Taven Bryan, the screen to Patrick. Nowhere to go. Busted up by Voshan Joseph, and it's fourth down. A lot of young players on this defense for Florida. Whoever that new coach may be, he's going to step into some very good active players. It's getting chippy, Beth. Yeah. Tyler is back to punt. Got you. This one's short, and it will take a fortuitous bounce for the Seminoles down inside the 10 yard line. A 60 yard punt aided by the action on the end. Well, the series, the Gators with the lead thanks to tremendous success in the early years. And then things changed with the arrival of Bobby Bowden. How about that stretch through 10 years? Both were in the top 10 when they met. It's been a lot of Florida State lately. And this is the first time since 1959 that both come in with losing records. But again, for the Seminoles, you've got streaks of 40 years in a row without a losing season. You've got a streak of 35 straight years going to a bowl. They have to win today and next week to keep those streaks alive. Third and five. Intercepted. Another ricochet pick off at the 20 yard line. Second takeaway for the Gator defense. First quarter has come to an end. Talked about accuracy, Beth. Puts it way to out front. The receiver knocks off the defender's helmet. And Johnny on the spot with the interception. That's Taylor, number one for Florida State, making a big play to close out this quarter. Tied at seven, but the Seminoles threatening as we get set for the second quarter. All even in the swap. And Cam tripped up behind the line. Let's go back to the interception. Actually going to be a noggin knocker here for Stanford Samuels, the DB. Yeah, throwing an inside route. It goes through the hands of Powell. That's a tight throw. Goes off the helmet of Samuels. And <laughs> Johnny on the spot again. Two, two plays. And when you don't get that many turnovers this season, Beth, you carry them off the field. A little field. escort service there. Defensive line appreciating the turnovers. Blackman trying to go over the top, and Duke Dawson had the coverage on Auden Tate. Going to be third down. Trying to get the ball to the big 6'5 receiver. Again, you got a catch radius. Your quarterback doesn't have to be very accurate with the ball. You get it in that area. Nice coverage. That's a matchup right now. Duke Dawson, number seven, versus Auden Tate. Tell you what, down here you really notice how well the Florida defensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. Florida State can't do anything running the ball, and now they're getting ready to pin their ears back and rush the quarterback. Just four yards rushing in this first half. Blackman to the air on third and long, into the end zone, touchdown Florida State. Naquan Murray at a 21-yard strike. Blackman showing a little bit of that arm strength, Beth. I'll tell you, when he gets it, he gets a good, huge play by him. It's a skinny post. He'll pull the safety to the right, come back to Murray. Perfect timing. Look at the distance between safety and receiver. It's an excellent job. Well played. Couple of scores off of turnovers for Florida State. Aguayo on for the extra, set a Florida State record last year in their win against Delaware State, hit 11 
points after they scored 11 touchdowns. Fourteen seven Seminoles on top here in the first half. Love seeing the development of the young quarterback pulling the safety, throwing a dagger in between two defenders, and he is one fired up camper. Touchdown, Florida State. The Sunshine Showdown, Gators and Seminoles. Florida trying to end a four-game losing streak in this rivalry. All 21 points so far in the first half have come off of turnovers. Adarius Lemons will bring it out. Met at the 20. Probably a lot of college football fans that wouldn't mind a little chaos around the country in the next eight days. And a first down for Florida to Josh Hammond. Of course, we've already seen Miami lose this weekend. Still got Auburn and Alabama coming up later. Undefeated Wisconsin coming up later. And right after us, Oklahoma and West Virginia Baker Mayfield, of course, will not get the start at quarterback for the Sooners. Franks heaving it downfield and overthrowing everybody. Josh Hammond was covered by Levante Taylor. The Hammond stops on this route, and I like these plays. The quick pass to the outside, Beth, to open it up. Then you get Felipe on the move where he's got levels, multiple players in front of his eyes. These help young quarterbacks be successful. But again, good coverage on the back end by Florida State. Ryan behind Franks on second and ten. LaMichael cuts it back for a short game. Just over 60 yards on the ground for Florida here in the first half. Frederick Jones had the stop in its third and eight. This will be big here. Let's not forget Felipe Franks' top target on third downs. This number four, Brandon Powell, he's in the slot. He does his best work in space. Matched up by Fagan, number 24. Pressure coming off the edge. Franks trying to find the way out, and down he goes. Back at the 26-yard line, Stanford Samuels. Safety, nickel corner, coming off the edge. Now listen, you, you got a snap count here. You're, you're able to see this pre-snap as a quarterback. You've got to have a plan here. He doesn't have that, and they're able to find a way to get to the quarterback. That's a good job by Charles Kelly, drumming something up, confusing the young quarterback. Second sack for Florida, loss of eight. Townsend gets it away. This is DJ Matthews. One yard on the return. Good stuff from the fan base here in Gainesville. This is Murray trying to create. Thrown out of bounds around the 39 yard line. Well, we can already cross off Chip yeah. Kelly. He took the UCLA job just prior to kickoff. Apparently, today. apparently it's Boomer Busk uh, to one of those fans <laughs> if it's not Kelly, but. Listen, I'm not quite sold on Scott Frost coming here. It makes sense. I know Florida's going to try to make that push to get him. That's the next logical step. I think, you know, next week we'll have an American Conference championship game with Scott Frost and Norvell Mike at Norvell, Memphis. Yeah. He's a very good coach, offensive-minded guy. Maybe his name becomes part of the mix if they can't get those first two guys. Blackman on the rollout to his tight end, Ryan Izzo. Down to the 32-yard line and a flag on the play. Offside, defense number 98, penalties decline. Play results in the first down. So the play will stand. It's a nice play design. Full action to the right here, sell it hard, and then slip the front side tight end into the seam. 
wide open. Blackman's just got to put it on him. It's a nice catch by Izzo, who's become more of a target for this Florida State offense. 29 yards on the hook up with the junior out of Highland Lakes, New Jersey. Making his 35th career start today. He goes in motion to the left. They run that way. Patrick, big opening, rumbling down inside the 20 to move the chains and 14 more. You know, you go catch a football as a tight end. You know what you got to do? You got to come back and make a block. Izzo, number 81, watch right in front of your screen. Jack up the defensive end. That's a nice physical job. Getting on, I believe that's C.C. Jefferson on the outside, number 96, one of their best defensive players. I love tight ends. Get busy today on both sides of the football bet for both teams. Patrick follows his fullback. Vickers actually ran into him and then stumbles forward for four more. Joseph has returned to the defense for Florida. He gets the stop. I like the addition going to Jacquez Patrick. Patrick is 6'3", 234 pounds, so a bigger body, maybe versus some of these bigger defensive linemen for Florida. Also noticing we're keeping the runs on the front side versus cutting back with that Florida speak and chasing down. Patrick, gaping hole up the middle. One man to get by and hold down at the three yard line by Gardner. That was a quick hitter. Nice acceleration by Patrick, man. Getting down hard, Hill hard, 33 rushes now. Lil Gimpy may need a break here on that tackle, carrying Florida defenders. For a line that's had some issues, Anthony, this year, they are opening up some space today. That was Cole Minshew off that right side as Akers comes back in after the 16-yard gain for Patrick. Blackman stumbling and gets the ball to Akers, and C.C. Jefferson wraps him up for the loss. It seems like every time Akers gets the ball, he loses yards. He can't get any blocking for him. Jefferson off the edge here on the backside. I think the tight end's supposed to come down and cut that defensive end off. All the other linemen went down hard right. Tight end blocks out. Leaves a man wide open. Four carries for just one yard today for Akers. Second and goal. 6-5 on the bottom. You have Tate. Blackman will hand it off again. Akers denied. Again, C.C. Jefferson with the tackle, and it's third down. Yeah, C.C. Jefferson, he got blocked on that big run earlier. Now he's come back strong. He obviously is not a happy camper, making two plays consecutively. It's a nice job, third and... Third and goal in this situation. What will Florida State dial up with the trip set at the bottom of the screen? Trying to fix up Patrick over there on the sideline. Akers will stay in there. Blackman back of the end zone, incomplete. Fourth down. Intended for Keith Gavin. And Aguayo will come on. I thought he might have been able to punch it into the tight end right there on the goal line. Decides to go with the, the top receiver. And really has to throw it away, Beth. It's unfortunate. Here's the tight ends right here. As soon as he turns around, he's got a, a sticks route, a stop route right at the goal line. That ball comes out on time and hits him on the outside. That might be a touchdown. Ricky Aguayo's first field goal attempt in two and a half games. This one from 25 yards. It's good. Ten point advantage for the Seminoles on the road. And we welcome you back to ESPN College Football presented by Vizio as part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. Florida State trying to make it five straight over the Florida Gators. And Jimbo Fisher looking to go 4-0 here at the Swamp. They've got the 10-point lead in the first half. Beth Bowens, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman with you on a spectacular sun splash day in Gainesville. Lemons out of his own end zone. Gets to the outside. 
And the hit is made by Logan Tyler, the kicker. Franks gives to P. Ryan. It's also the time of the year where you start looking forward. You've got a redshirt freshman quarterback. You've got a sophomore running back in P. Ryan. They'll get their other star running back, Malik Davis, back next year. They're bringing in a top 10 recruiting class, including one of the best quarterbacks, Matt Corral, they next a, year. They need a coach. Uh, you know what? Put all those pieces together. You could turn it around quite a bit. I mean, you see the class rank right now. They're, they're still there. I mean, your top 10 in the country, that, that that's, that's strong. You're competing not only with the Seminoles, but now with Miami again. They're right back in the championship chase, despite their loss. Intercepted! Taylor with his second of the day, and a pick six for the Seminoles! Takeaways all year for FSU. They've got three in the first half. I mean, look, he's indecisive. It's a quick rally. It's either waiting for a receiver to get open or there's no one there. I mean, to me, there's nothing there. Throw the ball away. They're just sitting on it. Number one, Taylor just jumps right in front, watches him the whole time as he's pumping through a three-step quick route. 21 points off of turnovers for Florida State. Aguayo with the extra point. 24 to 7, 346 to go in the first half. Levante Taylor with two interceptions and a pick six. A scoop and score for Jacob Pugh off of the hit by Brian Burns. And it's now 28 of the 31 points total in the game. That's good stuff. Three and outs, punts. A lot of life on one side, Beth. Can Florida regain some energy and get the ball rolling? Logan Tyler's kick's gonna be short. Powell with a chance. Out across the 25. Gators have some work to do as Florida State's also going to receive the opening kick of the second half as Thompson motors out to the 40. Third down and four. Franks hooks up with Hammond for the first down. How that's not a flag number one is crazy, but that's a heck of a catch by Hammond. I mean, the guy's draped and pulling his arms. Thompson Nazrul Dean in its safety and P. Ryan met by Josh Kando, the big time freshman out of Baltimore, right in his face in a loss of seven. He had four sacks last week. He was the ACC Defensive Player of the Week. He doesn't even get the play. He comes in for an injury. And you know what he does? He makes a play on the first snap. I love this kid. The, the future is bright for this true freshman. You got Kando, who was the number one defensive end recruit last year, and also Marvin Wilson, the number one defensive tackle recruit last year. 6'7", 250 pounds, big, pretty defensive end, man. He is going to be a force to reckon with. Massey. In the Seminole territory and down to the 41-yard line, and it's a much more manageable third down. After a pickup of 10. Franks, 5 of 13, 51 yards in this first half and two picks. 119 to play with here. Before the break, needs a third down conversion. Man-to-man -man coverage across, the, across each guy. Can a receiver get off and get open? for Franks. Derwin James coming on a blitz. He's picked up, and Franks bothered on the throw, and it's incomplete fourth down. Josh Sweat returned to the field and put some heat on the young quarterback. 
Again, uh, there's a fake set up, but the back has to go out and protect. And number 73, Ivy lets the pressure come. And again, I'd say let's hit a tight end on the edge here. Maybe they can sneak one out. All the blocking they've been doing so far in this game. Cleveland, first down to the 25-yard line in a gain of 15. Cleveland, one of their biggest playmakers early on this season. And he really hasn't been utilized much the last four, yeah. three, four games, Beth. I mean, just not a, not been a fixture. Comes wide open. Nobody home. Randy Shannon trying to get something drummed up here, going on fourth and six. Situational football, Beth. A minute to go to half. You got one timeout. Let's see if the young quarterback can work this out heading towards the red zone. Pressure coming. They'll dump it off to Piran. Swing it out of the backfield and close to another Florida first down. Got a good block from Tyree Cleveland. Derwin James was eyeballing this from the start, but nice touch pass and good speed by Pirine to get outside to shed that block and also, Beth, to get out of bounds. 45 seconds to go. Second and one. Swain Massey and Cleveland trips right. Franks fires it right down the middle, and James almost picked it off at the goal line. He, he, uh, he eyeballed that right down. Derwin James was all over it. Oh, just goes right through his hands. Risky play by Franks. Those are two big plays that Derwin James missed right there. The big tackle in the open field, then an interception going right through his hands. An average player, that's acceptable, but a special player like him, they expect him to come down with those. Had a pick six last week. Mel Kuyper has him as high as number three on his draft board if Derwin comes out. Franks to Massey. Inside the 10, shoved out at the six by James. And it's first and goal, Florida. It's a great catch by, by Massey there. He's got to adjust to the football. And again, another smart player getting to the sideline and getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. 35 seconds to go. And for Florida, Brandon Powell returns to the field. He'll be slotted left alongside Tyree Cleveland. Franks looking left, looking for Powell. Got him! Touchdown, Florida! I'll tell you, what an effort by Powell. I think he came back in the game still a little shaken up, and he might have re-aggravated what he had hurt on a few plays before, but that is a heck of a job with concentration and tight coverage. He's going to pr press it up, push off, get that lean, but look at the concentration. Make sure he comes down with the clean. There it is. He's got it, Beth. Second touchdown catch of the season for Brandel, uh, Brandon. And Felipe Franks engineering a 12-play, 74-yard drive. Extra point is blocked. They've been good at blocking kicks all year long. And Wally Ame got it. Ninety-four right here. It's a good vert by him, and is that a low kick? I mean, that again, just when you have something good go for you, Beth. You score a touchdown, something brings you down on the block kick. 24-13, Florida State trying to make it five in a row over the Gators. And so now let's get you back to the studio.
Our Sunshine Showdown, Florida State leading Florida 24 to 13 at the break, uh, at the uh, break as we get set to start this third quarter. Beth Mowens, Anthony Becht. We got Rocky Boyman, our field analyst today. All right, you're a half away yeah. from beating your arch rival. What, what are you expecting from the Gators and the Seminoles coming up? Well, so far we haven't seen a lot of offense, right? Yeah. It's been more defense, but both of these teams, if they want to find a way to get back in this game, especially for the Gators, they got to kind of feed off of what they did in that last series right before the half. That was their best drive of the game. They converted some third downs and made some big plays at the quarterback position. I think right now, the, le the less you can give the quarterback, give that responsibility, the better you are. You got to run the football, be effective. I still think Florida can run the football if they can make a stop here on defense and create that balance they need to have some kind of success against this Florida State defense. A couple of young guys at quarterback, a couple of freshmen. They, they've been through a half now of Florida, Florida State, who might be able to ratchet it up in the second half. Rocky Boyman, what you got? Yeah, talking to Jimbo Fisher, he's obviously very pleased with his defense that half, except for the final drive. He said, look, we had opportunities to make plays, we just didn't. And then Randy Shannon, the Florida coach, said, 80% of life, guys, is showing up. He said, we've showed up. We just got to find a way to build off that momentum of that touchdown drive right before half. Randy Shannon, the interim head coach, replacing Jim McElwain after he and the school parted ways uh, about a month ago. Picked up his first win as the interim coach last week against UAB. Gators will not be a part of the postseason. They are trying to deny Florida State an opportunity. The Seminoles need to win today and next week against Louisiana Monroe to keep their bowl streak alive. It's 35 years in a row. And Akers has yet to find his footing a lot. When he just slipped there, it's been some minus yard plays so far. Uh, just hasn't gotten into the flow. Lack of rhythm for him so far in this game. Yeah, Akers has just a little too much east-west in his game. I think you go back to Jacquez Patrick. He is a north-south runner. He gets those big pads moving downhill. I say they go back to him. Seven carries for six yards for Cam Akers. A short game there. You know, Cam coming in. With two games, possibly three left, he had a chance to break the freshman rushing record set by Dalvin Cook, but struggling so far today. And Rocky, here comes your call as Patrick will return. You know, Patrick's going to be a much more efficient pass protector in this situation. And the screen game, he becomes a bit of a factor when you're talking about third and long. Need to get out to the 35 for the first down. Blackman throwing it to the outside incomplete intended for Keith Gavin and the Florida Gators defense forces the three and out well that's what they need it they need to get a quick three and out Beth and let's see if at halftime you're able to make adjustments and try to get five or six plays that you feel real good about and get your quarterback in a rhythm that first half Felipe Franks was not in a rhythm double pumping short passes couldn't get with a good mesh with the receivers. Anxious to see if this young man can put it together and have a half and get a scene back in this game. Florida will set up for a return and Swain way back inside his own 30. Gets by the first man. Flags are down and Swain goes down at the 45. Big time boot by Tyler of 58 yards. We have multiple fouls on the play. During the return, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number five of the kicking team. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick, correction, the end of the run. Following the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five of the kicking team. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 80 of the receiving team. Those fouls will all set. That is number 80's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Five number five. Mm -hmm. There's five running down. Wait, that that looks like Jackson on the back of his. There's a couple of fives. There's a couple of fives. Yeah, Jackson. Dontavious Jackson just left. So Florida now set up inside the 40-yard line of Florida State. 
due to the fouls against the Knowles. They'll run it with LaMichael Pirine. 164 yards of total offense for the Florida Gators, just 115 for Florida State, but they've been aided by two defensive touchdowns. That's the difference so far. With this field position, Beth, you, you gotta find a way to get in scoring position, even if it's just a field goal, get the momentum back on your side after all those penalties to come up with nothing would be terrible. First down to the 27. Gain of 11 yards. It's good to see Powell back in. Banged up on that touchdown catch. Looks like he's good to go. And that's a huge, that's about as clean as I've seen Franks get into the pocket, read it, deliver it, and put it on a place where the receiver can catch it for a nice game. And seven targets so far, Bet. That he's the guy. He's the guy Franks wants to find. And you see Powell clapping there. He, he wants the ball. He'll join Cleveland to the left. Hammond motions to the right. And the give is to Piran. May have picked up one. 11 carries, 21 yards today. Got some big bodies up front for Florida's offensive line. 330 pounds, 330 pounds, 330. Three guys, 330 pounds. I'd like to see them get more between the tackles in the run game. They're bouncing a lot of stuff outside. We know one thing about Florida State. They got a tremendous amount of speed getting to those places. Try more mashing them in those running opportunities. Empty set here for Franks on second down. Franks chucks it away. Seven targets, Beth Hardy, in this game for Powell. He's a third down specialist. Had an opportunity to throw to him earlier. He didn't. Got to trust the route as a quarterback. Believe in what you're doing and throw the football. Powell's the motion man. Franks looking for him. Had him wide open across the middle and couldn't get it there. Up for grabs in the end zone, incomplete. It was ready for the taking, Anthony. And again, I know the, the, the pocket collapses, but you know he's in breaking, right? You see it develop. We both saw it up here. Watch him come inside, okay? The pocket's good right now. His eyes are on him. Throw the football right now. He waits, he's hesitant. Again, his head is there. Believe in it, that's his guy. That's a missed opportunity now. You gotta have that if you're the quarterback. This would be a 45 yard attempt for Eddie Pinedo, the junior from Miami, who's hit his last 15 in a row. The most accurate kicker in Florida history. And he's got it. 24-16, Knowles. The little lights aren't qu twinkling, Clark, but those two gentlemen are. That is all in for a couple of Seminole fans. So Garnet that, and gold superheroes. So how do you get, the, you like lay on the ground, just roll yourself I, around that stuff? I mean, You need a good friend, don't you? Something, there's a dinosaur, <laughs> look at this guy. That's a gator. Oh, it's it. That's it's an gator. inflatable gator, It's yeah. a gator. Through the end zone for the touch. It's we are in the final half a minute of this third quarter in a one score game. Cam Akers pushes his way out to the 30. Two defensive scores and a blocked PAT looming large right now in the Seminoles' favor. And they will have the football and that advantage as we head to the fourth quarter here in Gainesville. The Sunshine Showdown. Can the Knowles make it five in a row? You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And we welcome you back to ESPN College Football, presented by Vizio as part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. One score game, Florida State and Florida meeting for the 62nd time in a rivalry dating back to 1958. Florida State's won four in a row. 
And they need to win to keep alive their hopes of a 41st consecutive winning season and a 36th consecutive trip to a bowl game. Gators trying to spoil that at the swap today, and they are in the backfield again. Taven Bryan all over Patrick. This kid, they call him J.J. Watt. Literally, that's what they call him. Number 93 is going to work all the way over and beat his guy. And it's just brute strength. I mean, he just punishes him, plays his gap, and look who he finds. The running back throws him down. I'm telling you now, this kid is playing on Sundays, and he's going to, he's going to be helping somebody at the next level. Blackman's only hit on one of his last eight pass attempts in a throwing situation here. Out of the backfield, Patrick needs to make a man miss and does. Jacquez Patrick out across the 40 for a first down. For 235 pounds, Beth, that's, that's an agile man making a little guy in space miss. That's a huge play, huge conversion. Chauncey Gardner, who's been applying big hits in this game, comes up short, not wrapping up and be able to bring the big man down. Patrick, the starter for the first half of the season, then hampered by a knee injury. Cam Akers took over, but it's been Patrick carrying the mail today. Here's the pitch to Akers. He has struggled all afternoon to get into positive territory, and flags are down. Cam says it was a face mask. Reese. Face mask, 96 defense. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Reese. Face mask is on 96, right there. But here comes Reese at the end. Hard to tell there. Yeah. Yeah. Blackman, down he goes again. Sandwiched by a couple of Gators. What an effort by Campbell, number 55, and number 50 Moon here. Just getting it done. It was a sandwich job. Both guys, Johnny on the spot both times. Big hit. It's a great play by Florida defense. Loss of nine. Moon limps off to the side. Got a little bent back, Beth, on that. In that last tackle. Blackman down the seam and it's cut down to the 15 yard line. Ermin Lane, the converted defensive back. What a throw and what a catch. Now, what do they say about DBs? They can't catch. But that's a heck of a job tracking that football and beating the DB off the line of scrimmage. And you want to talk about a competitor, man. This Blackman kid, he's getting better, Beth. He's definitely getting better. True freshman. Every week you see a little flash of something to bring that competition. 39-yard gain, Beth, down there. First and 10, Seminoles into the red zone. Akers. Down inside the 10. Still a long ways off, but it'll be interesting next spring for James Blackman with the return of DeAndre Francois. Good to see support. Two quarterbacks there. Francois efforting on Blackman for his play. Cam Akers with the cutback inside the five. Touchdown, Florida State. It's been quiet all day, Beth. The quiet assassin on that play. Finally, Cam Akers gets a hole and makes somebody miss. Virtually untouched to the last yard into the end zone. Francois celebrating on the sideline. A seven play, 74 yard drive, taking up four minutes. And the Seminoles pad the lead.
31-16 after the Ricky Aguayo PAT. Getting the big run by Akers, finally finding his step, getting into the end zone. Big Ern, Big Ernie Barker was our lead chef last night. The sausage, the chicken, delicious. Had a terrific time all season long. So glad that y'all could share it with us. Not done yet, 11-21 to go here in Gainesville. But Not to change the subject, but I apologize for ruining that cake picture. <laughs> I was really hungry. I didn't get the memo. I had to get a slice before the picture was taken, so that's my bad. From midfield down to the end zone, and the pick six coming up for Matthew Thomas into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. The third for the defense today. Got a little celebration flag going on, but Beth, again, when you're playing quarterback, you cannot eyeball your receivers. It's going to lead you to a dangerous place, and Thomas comes up with a huge play for Florida State. Two pick sixes and a strip sack that led to a score today for the FSU defense for Matthew Thomas. An interception return for a touchdown and a fumble. Thomas, let's get in the end zone. Down at the half yard line. Unbelievable. After review, a Anthony, how many times we see that? The interception right? was down short of the goal line. Ball Whether it's dropping the ball the before the line or First going down. down. When will defensive players, especially will enforce the unsportsmanlike get an opportunity to just run in the end zone? Back to the 16. And there is an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that will be administered, so it's back out to the 16-yard line. Wow. The showboating costly for Florida State. And Jimbo's looking for him. <laughs> and Matthew's hiding. Somebody. Somebody needs to find him. He's not happy. Again, let's see how this works out, Beth. After that big play, gets called back. New life for the Gators here. A 28-yard pick six taken away. And then, as a result of the showboating penalty, it's a 15-yarder. This is Patrick, stretched out by the Gator front line, wrapped up by Gardner and a loss of two. I know Florida State has created a lot of turnovers today. You know, got to credit Florida's defense too, but they're playing hard, trying to keep them in the game. This offense for Florida has not been able to do anything, but Florida State's defense came to play today, making huge plays. and. It's been a great effort. Patrick gets the call again, wrapped up by David Reese. Third down. Haven't called out David Reese's name much. He's the team's leading tackler. 88 tackles, only a sophomore. Again, another young player with some of these corners that will all be in place next year for whoever that new coach may be. Third and long, Florida, St Florida State got to find a way. They're going to keep it on the ground, Patrick. Down inside the 10, legs turning to the 5, and he's got it. Wow. First what down, Seminole. What an effort. I mean, really, what an effort. That's the second time today, Beth, we've seen this kind of effort. I mean, you think right now, you just bring this guy down. 
And he just keeps churning his legs, carrying defenders, and that takes the will out of a defense on a third and long like that. Those big backs late in the game, fourth quarter, they just pound away the whole game. And this late in the game, those defenders, it's so hard to tackle those guys. Needed 14, and he got 15, first and goal. Patrick down to the two. Clock continues to roll now at nine minutes to play. Much, much maligned offensive line bet this year, creating holes up front for this running game when they need it. That, that's the biggest thing. Hasn't been pretty all day, but they've gotten some yeah. key runs and some key holes open to, to make some plays. Neighbors is the fullback in front of Patrick. Jaquez tripped up in the backfield, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and it's third down. Third goal at the three. 21 of their 31 points coming off of turnovers. They're trying to add to that after the interception by Matthew Thomas. After Thomas initially had a pick six, it was taken away because he tried to drop and roll into the end zone and he put his knee down at the one yard line and then got whistled for unsportsmanlike after that. Blackman, play action, end zone touchdown, Auden Tate. What a catch. What a catch, wow. That saves the day for Matthew Thomas somewhat. Look at high point the ball and go up and get this. Tate is, I'll tell you, when he wants to turn it on, he can be a unbelievable wide receiver. And Jimbo Fisher just went to the from the maddest guy in the world to the happiest guy in the world. James Black, when he <laughs> let the clock go down there, had to call the timeout, but then a beautiful strike. Jimbo is happy. Two touchdown passes today for the true freshman. James Blackman takes them on a six play drive, covering 16 yards off of the interception. Now 28 points off of turnovers for the Knowles. Matthew Thomas, you're good. Come out of hiding. Auden Tate saves the day with the touchdown. <laughs> Blackman says, I got your back, buddy. I got your back. Phew. Yeah. So 3.15 to go here for Florida. They're down a bunch. And the Seminoles are uh, looking very much like they'll be able to keep their hopes alive to keep the streaks moving. And how about a shout out to Jimbo Fisher and the success that he has had, arguably the best ever in this rivalry between the Seminoles and the Gators. He's looking right now to move to seven and one in his career against Florida and a four and record at the Swamp. It's been dominant, Beth. Been dominant. And that's what the new coach of Florida will have to try and figure out. And now it sets up a, well, a very meaningful game, the rescheduled game from Hurricane Irma against Louisiana Monroe next weekend up at Dope. And they will take a five and six record in there. So you'll still have the possibility of extending the bowl streak to 36 years in a row. And if you can get to that bowl game, a chance to keep the streak alive and get a 41st consecutive winning season in a row. Hammond down to the 41. And look at what's happened with these two programs. Seven coaches since 1955 at Florida State. Seven in the last 13 years at Florida when you include three interim guys. And they're, they're gonna be searching now for their fourth coach in nine years here at Florida. 
already are. Of course, it's always nice when you're talking to prospective candidates to include those three national championships that they have won here under Steve Spurrier in 96 and then Urban Meyer in 2006 and 2008. Adorning the swamp here, those significant numbers and seasons. We're just underway today, a fantastic day, rivalry weekend on the ESPN networks and around the country. Thanks, caught by Powell at the 20. Final minute. Franks to the end zone, incomplete. And what could be an historic win for Florida State in this regard? They have never won five straight over Florida. And they are 53 seconds away from doing just that for the first time in their history. And they got an opportunity now with a game next week and a potential bowl bid if they can win. That's a winning season. Yep. And you don't want to go out as a senior with that lingering long, was it 40 years, you said? Yeah, 40 and 35. I mean, so these guys got something to play for, there's no question. I promise you this, both of these teams will be back in the national spotlight very soon, moving forward. Gators will run it. And out of bounds around the five yard line is a Darius Lemons. Pickup of 12, 47 seconds to go. One of the issues for both teams all year, injuries forcing a lot of young guys to play and a lot of those guys getting their first taste of this rivalry and valuable playing time throughout the second half of the season that they can take with them moving forward. Almost a fourth pick of the day. That was Tavares McFadden. And you know he's sick, Beth. He had eight picks last year. He doesn't have an interception this season. They rarely throw the ball his way this year. And he almost snags this with one hand, and he is dying to get that pick this season. Tremendous length, 6'3". Second and goal, Florida. Franks fires to Powell, touchdown. Second TD catch for the senior in his final appearance at the Swamp. Tight window throws in traffic, and Powell's been a guy that's been the target for Florida. And you're right, Beth. It's good to see the senior, his last game at the Swamp, take in that touchdown. Tremendous career for that senior wide receiver, Brandon Powell. Pinedo's extra point. They're going to fake it. And they're not going to make it. The holder and punter, Johnny Townsend, hauled down. Of course, this time of year, we're always talking about the coaching carousel and all the changes. Ole Miss looking for a new head coach to replace Hugh Freeze. Jim McElwain ousted in late October here at Florida. Tennessee made the move on Butch Jones in mid-November. Jim Mora last Sunday. And then yesterday, post-game, Brett Bielema at Arkansas. And earlier today, Mike Riley fired at Nebraska, UCLA announcing the hiring of Jim Mora. It's a lot of SEC coaches, Beth. Uh, yeah. They all can't get Nick Saban because he's taken, right? So who's that guy going to be? And Scott Frost can't coach all these teams. Chip Kelly's gone. I'd say this. There's some good coaches out there across the country. I know we like to throw around favorable names that everybody knows, yeah. but let, let's do ourselves justice as 
universities and organizations and administrations to go make sure we're thoroughly looking at all coaches that are available out there and give everybody a fair chance to state their case to be their guy. I still think the best job for Scott Frost is right here in Florida. If he were, he's 42 years old, if he were 62, okay, you go to Nebraska and you go back to where you played and stuff. But if you want to win championships, which is what young coaches want to do, you look at the programs that have the talent and, again, are, are used to winning titles like that. I think it's right here in Florida. I think that's what he should do. Put dinner on it, Rocky? Ooh. <laughs> I'll, I'll put dinner on it. All right, fine. there we go. The nation's heard it. I'm going to put a little day. We'll steak dinner. Probably going to get a hard sell from uh, when, people. When are you going to win at Nebraska anytime soon? I get it. I get it. That's, there's going to be a lot of outside forces with that one. I mean, it would be tough for Scott. I mean, look, he's got a lot of ties with that school. National championship. I mean, it's just, you know, you feel like... And I think that's who the fan base want, right, Beth? I yeah. mean, they're probably wanting him yeah. to come back. And, no doubt. You know, I don't know if they're going to get Smash Mouth football because he's kind of changed his mentality a little bit. And that's what they want as a fan base, too. So what? Wild card thing. there is Mike Leach, of course. Bill Moose is the new AD, and he's the guy that hired Leach at Washington State. They're playing in the Apple Cup tonight. By the kicking team. Five yard penalty be tacked on from where the ball went out of bounds. First down. Charles Barkley on game day today said that was his second favorite coach behind Gus Malzahn. Yeah. <laughs> the highly entertaining Mike Leach. Yeah. They would they would have a good conversation, those two guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. The thing about Nebraska too is it's such a hard place to recruit. I mean, right here in Florida, you got just a bevy of talent within a, a tank of gas. Out there, it's a much, much different situation. I like my steak medium well, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll steaks. have the result hey, for you during, you're making, during bowl season. You're making credible points. There's no question. You are making some solid points. Again, I think it's I just think if you're young, you want to win titles. You want to put your name among the Urban Myers and Nick Sabins of the world. I just don't I don't see it happening at Nebraska, at least not in the next three, four years. It's been a real treat, guys. We've enjoyed the regular season with the H crew. And we hope you have had a good time with us all year long. Jimbo Fisher and Florida State winning their fifth in a row over Florida for the first time in Seminole football history. 38 to 22, the final with 28 points off of turnovers and a couple of scores for the defense. As Jimbo goes to 4 and 0 here at the Swamp. And a hug for Randy Shannon who is still one of the top defensive minds in the game. And uh, the coaching staff here sure to land in some good spots. He and Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator. Down to the field, here's Rocky. Coach. Coach. <laughs> well, let's just take a hand some guys here real quick. Coach, you should get the Gatorade bath. What happened? Oh, Lord, I got an ice bath. I know that was, that was a, for a good reason, but man, they were cold. <laughs> it's been a tumultuous season for you. Injuries, hurricanes. You come in here, you get a win in a rivalry game. How's this feel? It's huge. I mean, the, the people at Florida State and what this game means to them and be able to come down here and play in such a great environment, a tough atmosphere. And for our kids to persevere and just keep playing and keep playing for something. A lot of pride in these kids and very happy for our fans and alumni. You have one more game. Tell us why the future is bright for this Florida State program. Well, just look, there's so many young players on this football team. There's so much effort, ability, and there's so much character. You know, this team has never quit the whole year, and there's a lot out there to play for, and it will be in the future. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. One more to go against Louisiana Monroe next weekend for the Seminoles. Coming up next, West Virginia and Oklahoma. But right now, let's get you back to the studio. And then Joey and Jesse.